after Pentecost. It is my prayers that as we gather here this morning, may the blessings of God fall upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our announcements are inside our bulletin. Our summer services will continue in our church during the month of July and August. The windows in the Sunday school rooms have been ordered and uh, it costs $25,000 and total amount received to date is $2,560. Please, if you are planning to support this, let us uh, talk to Mary uh, in the office. The court sessions continues in the church education hall during the week. So please, if you are coming into the church, let us pass through the main door. Today is our food bank Sunday and we collect non-perishable items for our local food bank. We want to encourage all our church members and those that are interested, if you are watching us live at home, to please let us support our local food bank. Our website and Facebook page is uh, on renovation. So please, if you have any photos or videos that uh, is related to church event, please let us uh, bring it to the church and let's give it to the church office. Immediately after we finish with these pictures or photos, we will return it back to you. We have some community events in our communities that we encourage us to please let us attend this. And uh, during the month of summer, or as from today, we are planning to join the authorized revision for the church. We call it PAC. Please, you can talk to Mary and uh, she will give us the details. And finally, our church is looking for an hobbyist for the church. So, please, if you have somebody who love to be an office or choir director, please let us uh, contact the ministry and personnel committee. Okay, none of them is here today. Uh, Evelyn Clark, uh, Carolyn Drake, um, Leonard Ellen, and uh, Ken Nicholas, the four of them are mission and personnel. So please let us contact them. We have a donation from for development fund by Marissa and Brennan in memory of their mother Julie Gabriel Hill. The donation came from the Yard Sales and in support from Youth Development Fund. Also we have another donation in loving memory of Gordon and Philip Gear by the Gear family. Thank you all. May the Lord bless you all. And please, I want to encourage our church as we continue to do during the week. Let us call one person or two and let us ask them how they are doing. The Lord bless us. If there are any other announcements during the service, we'll let us know. Let us gather together in, in spirit and in truth as we take the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heart above. Praise Him from the heavens. Praise Him from Praise Him sun and moon. Praise Him all you shining stars. Praise Him and the Lord us above the stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. Let us take a open prayer together. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the grace of seeing first Sunday in July. 
and so we praise you with all our strength, mind, heart, and soul. Receive us and our praises and be in our praise today and evermore. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first aim is taken from Voices United, number 395, and it is coming, coming and sit down. 395. And please stand as you think. Please be seated. You are a part of the family. Please, if you have any celebrations to share with the church this morning, please, I would like you to share it now. Any birthday, any celebrations, any anniversary? It was my anniversary on the 20th. That's why I wasn't here. Congratulations to you. Our 11th year marriage anniversary. Congratulations. Any anniversary, any birthday, any celebrations? What do you say? Um, I can't hear you. School is over. Oh, congratulations. School is over. Oh, okay. Let's sing together. Congratulations to you, to Jesus. May God's preachers blessings abide unto you. Congratulations to you. 
Okay, our next song is taken from Voices United, number 575. We are singing this morning because we have entered the second phase of the year. So we need just to thank God this morning and give him praise. So we are going to sing some songs this morning. So our song, second song is from 575, I'm going to live so God can use me. And it's inside our Voices United. And as you are able, you may stand. How can you use me? Anywhere, anytime. I'm gonna live. Live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna walk, walk so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna walk, walk so God can use me. So God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna sing, sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna sing so God can use me. And with our promises, let us listen to the promises of Christ for us from the scriptures this morning. The promises of Christ for us as written in the scripture this morning. morning. The scripture this morning, the first one is from Mark 1, starting at verse 35. This is about Jesus preaching in Galilee. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, we must go on to the other villages around here. I have to preach to them also, because this is why I came. So he traveled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. The second scripture is from Luke 11, starting at verse 1. Jesus teaching on prayer. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us day by day the food we need. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone who does us wrong. And do not bring us to hard testing. And Jesus said to his disciples, suppose one of you should go to a friend's house at midnight and say, friend, let me borrow three loaves and br of bread. A friend of mine who's on a trip has just come to my house and I don't have any food for him. And suppose your friend should answer from inside, don't bother me. 
The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Well, what then? I tell you that even he will not get up and give you the bread because you are his friend. Yet he will get up and give you everything you need because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. And so I say to you, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For those who ask will receive. And those who seek will find. And the door will be open to anyone who knocks. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a snake when he asks for fish? Or would you give him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, because your word is yea and amen. Speak to us with precision and accuracy this morning. May the entrance of your word give light and understanding unto the simple this morning. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to once again thank everyone here this morning for being here. The year is now midway. We have entered the second part of the year. So we have every cause to thank God for his faithfulness over our lives. So many things happened during the years past, but because of God's faithfulness, we are alive today. About four weeks ago, I started a series about stewardship. My first sermon on stewardship is show me. Instead of saying it, we need to show how to do it. And the second Sunday, Bob Stroke, he preached to us about uh, the fatherly love that God shown us, and he make every effort to describe this to us, to see how we are loved by God and by uh, the love that is immeasurable, and uh, he, su he sum it up in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, and I spoke to us about spiritual discipline of study, studying the word of God. I let us know that it is very, very important for us as a Christian if we are to grow. How do we take care of ourselves? It's by reading the word of the Lord. It's by studying, and studying, I mean reading the Bible. And I let us know that challenges will come but it is only what that we have in us that will make us to stand. This morning, I want to move ahead. It is what we do, but I want to encourage us. And if you have not been doing it, I want to challenge us to start uh, to do this spiritual discipline, and it is prayer. Prayer. In my own family, we pray, we gather together, Myself and my wife would pray in the morning, and before my children would go out, we pray together in the morning, and in the night, we gather together, we study the word of God every night, and we pray together. That is our custom. We have our own challenges. We have our own problems. Not that everything is rosy for us. But we stand on the word of God. We believe that with God, 
all things are possible. We believe in the power of prayers. We believe that with God, He can do everything. We believe that problems will come, challenges will come. But the power of prayer will make us to stand. As you are looking at me, not everything is rosy. I must confess to you. But we believe that with God is our sufficiency, is everything for us. Of all the spiritual disciplines, prayer is the most central because it ushers us into perpetual communion with the Father and brings us into the most profound and highest human spirit work. Real prayer is life-creating and life-changing. One of our fathers in the Lord, William Carey, writes that prayer, secret, fervent, believing prayer lies at the root of all personal godliness. If you want to live a godly and holy life, you need to embrace prayer. The closer we come to the heartbeat of God, the more we see our need, and the more we see our need, and the more we desire to be conformed to Christ. Personally, I believe that everyone who walks with the Lord wants to know how to better communicate with him and pray. I have found no Christian, I mean maturing in the faith, who does not want a better prayer life and improves that communication. I still have an intense desire to know how to pray more effectively and to spend time with God. That desire has not lessened. To the contrary, it has increased. I'm convinced that you want to see God doing something in your life, in the life of your children, in the life of your family, in your neighbor's life, in your business, in your health, in this church. Prayer is the number one item on that agenda. In the passage read to us this morning in Mark chapter 1, verses 35, and in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went to a lonely place, and there he prayed. Who was that? Who rose in the morning? That is an excellent commentary of the lifestyle of Jesus, praying continuously. Jesus' prayer life was successful because it was planned, private, and prolonged. He got up early. Not only early, early enough, got far enough away and stay at it long enough. Jesus got up early. He ran away from every hindrances, every distraction. If you remember last week, I told us one of our problems in studying the word of God is what? Distraction. We have our hard part, our iPhone, our phone. You, you have the Facebook, you have the TikTok, you have the chat, you have this and that. Every minute, they are doing what? They are sending you a message. You want to do what? You want to reply. Distraction. 40, 50 years ago, it was not like that. But today, just pick that phone. This phone. You can do everything there. See, another message has entered for me to reply. Distraction. But Jesus left every distraction. He went to a lonely place. If you are reading KJV, KJV will tell you that Jesus went to the desert. If you are reading NIV, NIV will tell you that Jesus went to a solitary place. To the desert. We are nobody. Even his disciples, his apostles were not with him. He was praying alone, alone with God. If Jesus prayed, we ought to know that it is a must for us too, as a Christian. If Jesus prayed, Jesus, who himself is God, we too should do what? 
should cultivate the habit of what? Of prayer. Let us say prayer. I can't tell you. Say prayer. I can't tell you. Please say prayer. In Luke chapter 11 verse 1, Jesus' disciples told him, Lord, teach us to pray. These people had prayed all their lives. They have been with Jesus. They were with him at the Garden of Gethsemane. They are with him at so many places where they pray. Yet, something about the quality and quantity of Jesus' prayer caused them to see how little they knew about prayer. If their prayer were to make any difference on human sins, there was something they needed to learn. And Jesus told them through Luke chapter uh, 11, he taught them how to do what? How to pray. He started you see, if we want to analyze the prayer of Jesus in chapter 11, it will take us about two months. But briefly, this is prayer 101. We are, we'll go to 102 another day. So this morning, I will quickly give us the four ways to improve our prayer life. How many ways? Four ways to improve our prayer life. But let me start by telling her that the primary and best way to learn about prayer is to begin what? Praying. Start to pray. You may stand and pray. You may sit and pray. You may kneel down and pray. Just pray how you know how to pray to God. You may use the prayer of Jesus in Luke chapter 11. You may, look, the best way to pray is to pray, use the Bible to pray. Take any verse in the Bible and use it to pray. They are promises. They are, they are full of prayers. Just use the Bible. Four ways to learn how to pray. Number one, pray regularly. Do what? Pray regularly. In Mark that we read, chapter 1, verse 35, and in the morning, he rose and went to a lonely place, and there he prayed. That was the custom and culture of Jesus. He prayed what? Regularly. Let there be a stated time when you meet with God. Listen to this. If you only pray when you felt like it, it will not often be. The devil will see that you have feelings, that your feelings didn't prompt you. Therefore, there sh will not be any consistency. There should be consistency in our prayer life. Have you ever known a great athlete who only practiced when he felt like it. A runner doesn't become great because he only practices when he feels like it. A great pianist doesn't achieve success by only practicing when he feels like it. Neither does a Christian become a prayer warrior if only, if only prays when he feels like it. There should be a time to do what? To meet God. Let's look at the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree has been published, published, he went home to his upstairs room, where the windows opened toward Jerusalem three times a day. He got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he had done before. Daniel was one of the great men of God who gave us prophecy of end times. But he prayed how many times? Three times a day. In essence, he prayed regularly. Do you know the Muslim? Have you come across Muslim? How many times do they pray? Five times a day. Muslim, they pray. They will not miss it. Even if they are traveling and the hour of prayer comes, they will pack their car, put down their mat beside the road, and do their prayers. Five times every day. Let's go forward. Let's read from Psalm 55, verses 16 to 17. David said, I called to God, and the Lord saved me. Evening, morning, and noon, 
cry out in this way, and he heard my voice. That was the psalmist, the great David. He still prays. Evening, morning, afternoon, evening. Three times. In essence, let us reject every interruption that is in our human power to reject. There will always be interruption. There will always be. Definitely there will always be. But put down your phone. Be in a solitary place where people will not disturb you. And do you remember one thing? Sometimes when we want to pray, people will knock the door. Some people will call. Some people will say, I'm here to greet you. Those that have not come to greet you before, they are interruption. Number two, let us pray honestly. Pray honestly. Let me ask you this question. Are you honest with your prayers? When you are praying with God, are you honest? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 tells us, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Nothing. In essence, everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must what? Give account. The word uncovered is also translated as open. Uncovered. Another word translated to me what? Open. In essence, what the Bible is telling us here is that nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is open before him. In essence, are you angry about something? Tell God. He already knows it. Do you research something that someone has done to you? Tell God. Is there a job you didn't get and you don't understand why? Tell God. Have you turned up on the inside about anything? Be honest with God. Do you have a fear? Tell God. Are you afraid? Tell God. Is there any doubt? Tell God. Are you anxious? Tell God. Just be honest. Tell him your feelings. Sometimes we don't pray. We, we only complain. This and that. Have you talked to God? Everything is open before him. But you want us to talk to him. The Bible says, Hast till your joy will be filled. Up till now, you have not asked. Number three, pray constantly. In, there is a short verse in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, that every one of us can recite right from our, our, our uh, childhood age. It is pray without what? Without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Who can pray without ceasing? How can you pray while you are in the school, while you are working, while you are playing, while you are driving or doing something else? What does that mean? I think pray without ceasing means two things. Number one, we should be in such close fellowship with God that there is an unbroken communication with God. We are working with God and talking with God so intimately that it is just as if we never stop talking to God. Every moment of our life is a moment of in fellowship with who? With God. Number two, I think it can mean that there is no break in the pattern of our prayer life in our daily work. When you wake up in the morning, you pray. When you are in the shower, you pray. When you are eating your breakfast, you pray. As you are coming to the church, you pray. When you are going to school, you pray. When you are driving, you pray. When you are in a business meeting, you continue. Mm. 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 When you are in close fellowship, when you are in such close fellowship with God, that every moment becomes an opportunity of what? Of prayer. Even when you are walking, you do what? You pray. Let somebody say pray. I can't hear you. Say pray. pray. Daddy, say pray. pray. Thank you. Let's, let's, I would like to round it up with five things that happen when we pray. Five things that happen when we pray. Number one, prayer internalizes burden. There is always challenges, problems. 
here and there. But when you pray, it deepens our ownership of the burden and our partnership with God. During prayer session this month, we are going to mention some names. Let me tell you this thing. During our, all our prayer session in our family, we bring all our church members before God. The burden of this church becomes our burden. Not only my burden, but the burden of my family. Therefore, when we are in our, in our family uh, altar, we bring all our church members, all our burden before who? Before God. So when you pray, you become the ownership of the body. And listen, the body is not yours because it is in partnership with whom? With God. As we pray, we begin to become aware of how God might use our prayers to answer people's problems. How he might involve us in ways we have not previously foreseen. It will start to do miracles when you pray. It will start to touch people's lives. It will start to do what we have never seen. When you pray for your church, new things will happen. When you pray for your life, changes will come. When you pray for your children, changes will come. When you pray for a a particular problem, there will be a turnaround. Because it becomes your body. When you are are walking, you pray on it. When you are sleeping, you pray on it. When you are eating, you pray on it. Even when you are driving, you do what? You pray on it. You have internalized the problem and it becomes a burden to you. Lord, I want a change in this life. I want a change over this situation. Number two, prayer forces us to wait. Part of prayer is always waiting for God. God has three answers to prayer. Number one, yes. Number two, no. Number three, wait. Have you experienced that before? If you have never have experienced all these things. Do you know? Yes and no are not barriers, but wait, that is tough. Wait, that is tough. <laughs> it happened to me not, not too long. <laughs> I was at Sobeys to buy some things. And I saw a long queue. I was moving from one stand to where? To the other. To check. Is it wait? It's a problem to us. It's a problem. We want everything. Either yes, no, or what? Wait. Tell somebody, wait. Church, speak to me. Say, wait. I can't hear you. Say, wait. There is a tension between boldness and waiting on God. That tension is resolved by being persistent, yet accepting God's answer when it finally comes. When you wait, on your prayers on God. It will not make us to be frustrated that God is not on our schedule. But prayer forces us to be on God's word, time table. When you wait on God, you will not be frustrated that God is not on your schedule. You are not doing it as I plan it. You are not answering my prayers. I'm going back. I will not serve you again. No, but prayers allow you it forces you to be on whose timetable? On God's timetable. Number three, prayer opens our spiritual eyes. Prayer opens our spiritual eyes. There is a song that we do sing. I forgot. What's the song? Open my eyes. It's inside our, it's inside the, I, I think Voices United. It, it, it is inside voice. Open, huh? Open my heart, illumine me, spirit divine. Ah! 
when our eyes open some other things that we that we carry as if it is a load, we'll put it down. Listen to this. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. I want to read an account that happened between Elisha and his disciple. Listen. Now, when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for the Lord, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, O oh Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Say that I may see. I can't tell you, say that I may see. Say, Lord, open my eyes. I can't tell you, say, Lord, open my eyes. One more time, say, Lord, open my eyes. Oh, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his servant's heart and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. Three, I think, can we change it? Three, seven, one. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you know what happened? When our eyes, so this account that we read was between Elisha and his disciple. The king of that town sent warriors to go and capture Elisha. They were numerous. And his disciple, they were afraid that how are we going to do? Look at all what happened to us. Elisha said, be calm. His servant eyes couldn't see those that surrounded them. Do you know there are people, there are angels that surround you? He couldn't see them. And, he, and Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes. And the Lord opened his eyes. And he saw angels that are billions in thousands more than those that, that, that were with them. And he, he, he laughed. Says yes. Ah, when our eyes are open, we'll be able to see what God is able to do. Prayer open our eyes. It enables us to see what God is doing. It enables us to touch with what God is doing and how He's going to do us to do it. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes. The Lord will open our eyes. Number four, it aligns our heart with God's heart. It aligns our heart with God's heart. It adjusts our heart. It aligns our heart. It sets our thought, emotion, and action on the heart of God. Number five, prayer enables us to do what? To move forward. Say, move forward. I can't tell you. Say, move forward. Please, say, move forward. When you engage God in prayers. It enables God's people and enlarges God's kingdom. In John 15 verse 5, it says, without me, you can do what? You can do nothing. You can do nothing. You, can, you cannot do anything without me. But with me, you can march over the wall. Over the wall. You can leap over the wall. You can run and you'll not be weary. Once we have prayed, we are ready to do anything. Until we have prayed, we can do nothing. But once we have prayed, we can accomplish anything. Listen, brethren, I want us to engage in the spiritual discipline of prayer. It is very, very important. As a church, we are going to organize prayer meeting. We invite everybody. Let us come and pray. Pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for situation. And let us pray for one another. But before then, pray in your, in your houses, pray in your closet, pray for yourself, pray for me, pray for your... Do, have you been praying for your minister? Have you been praying for this church? 
do you want, do we want changes in our church? We need to pray. Look, if you want to draw down the supernatural hand of God, it comes with what? With prayers. Nothing happens except by prayers. We can talk from now to tomorrow. We have prayed about today's service. We said, God, let your word come out with precision and accuracy. Let, and you see, there will be results when we pray together. Go and look at churches that are moving, that are flowing. They have prayer meetings. They have prayer warriors. Yeah. Go and look at churches that are dying. They, are, they don't care about prayer. Call prayer meeting, they won't come. Call supper, they are there. Prayer meeting, they won't come. Yeah. It is only by what? By prayers. Let's conclude. My conclusion will be some questions this morning. And I want, to, I want you to answer this question to yourself. Don't talk to me. Talk to yourself. What does your prayer life look like this morning? Are you persistent in prayers? Are your prayers passionate? Or are they perfunctory? That is, like a, uh, it is just no zeal. Are your prayers filled with intensity, enthusiasm, or they are weak, timid, and lacking faith? How much time have you spent thanking God for all he has done for you? Or are you complaining? I don't have it. Another one is, who are you praying for? Who? Are you praying for your children? Are you praying for your family? Are you praying for your friend? Are you praying for your church? Are you praying for your minister? Please pray. For, I need your prayers. If I will succeed in this church, it is only by prayers. You, we all see it. If I will stay in your church, I need your prayers. If I will stay in our church, I need your prayers. Please pray for me. Pray for my ministry in St. James. I need your prayers. I cannot do anything. When the search committees, they were talking to me, we want this, we want that. Ah, I was very frank with them. I was very blunt with them. I never joke with them. We need prayers. If anything will happen in this church, it is what? Prayers. Uh, let's, let's see. It, we, we need prayers. A lot of prayers. And, and I mean a lot of prayers. Who are you praying for? Listen to this again. Is there anyone in your life that you are praying will get saved? Is there anyone in your life that you are praying will get saved? Ah, look. People must be saved. Another one. Is there a burden on your heart to see God's kingdom expand and to see his will be done? Let us close our eyes for prayers. Just pray, anyhow. I don't know what God has laid in your heart at this time to pray about. Pray. Just pray. Pray about the word of God as we just heard. Pray that the will of God, the plan of God, pray for the grace to pray. Pray for the power of prayers. I think you are praying. Ask God to enable you to ignite your fires of prayers. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Lord, we come before you this morning. Both the preacher and your church, we are naked this morning. We are naked. We want you to cover us with the grace and the power to pray. Even the best of us, we are lazy in prayers. We come before you naked this morning. We are naked. We are naked. You want you to cover us with your cloth, the cloth of prayers. 
We pray that may your will be done in our lives. May the fire of prayer be ignited in us. May our spirit cut that fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. What is that verse? 371. Please let us sing. It's not, yeah, but Voices United 371. Open my eyes that I may see. We sing, we can sing the three verses. 371. Please, you may stand as we sing. Voices United 371. Um, I'll take... seated. Let us open to Voices United again, number 87. I am the light of the world. Number 87. I am the light of the world. And please just remain seated as we sing.
thank our pianist and our organist for that song. <laughs> our God is good. All the time. Absolutely. The Lord is good. All the time. <laughs> Let us listen to the minutes for mission at this time. Minutes for mission. Good morning, everyone. Minutes for Mission. Creating a world without hate. On June 6th, not far from the old mosque in London, Ontario, a family of five was out for a walk, were deliber deliberately run over by a truck. I'm sure most of you are aware of this. It's been all over the news. Three adults and one teenager were killed. A nine-year-old boy is the sole survivor. Police say the family was targeted because they are Muslim. In a statement, the United Church of Canada condemned the horrific and hate-filled attack. Many people in the United Church are weeping alongside the extended families and friends of the family members who were killed and injured in this premeditated hate crime and are grieving the innocent lives lost in this abhorrent attack. The statement reads, acknowledging the fearfulness that some people in the Muslim community feel as a result. Did you know that 322 anti-Muslim hate crimes were reported in Canada between 2013 and 2019? And that's just the crimes we know about, those that have been reported. Prejudice runs deep. A 2017 study published by the Angus Reid Institute states that almost half of all Canadians have an unfavorable view of Islam, a perception evident in attitudes towards relig religious clothing while 88% of Canadians support a nun wearing a habit, just 32% approve of a person wearing a tab. Our United Church is deeply committed to working with Muslims and others for peace and justice. That's why your mission and service gifts help us as a church to develop statements and educational resources to combat prejudice and discrimination. In 2006, for example, the church released a statement and I quote, that we may know each other United Church Muslims relations today. It was preceded by an important study document with the same name designed to help church communities deepen loving relationships with our faith cousins. Similar study guides have been created to foster interfaith relationships, including Jewish and Hebrew faith, respectively bearing faithful witness as one and honoring the divine in each other as the second. Education begins with us. Your mission and service gifts help raise awareness and understanding that in turn contribute to a more peaceful world. One where no one is harmed by the hatred of another. Where no more children have to grow up without their family. In other words of our current moderator, Richard Bach, let us all have that which we have and all that we are to stand in the face of evil that would allow the cause of this crime of hatred. Even as one man has been arrested for his actions, let us uncover and work against the belief, the worldview, the racism, and the hatred that supported his choice. Amen. Your gifts through missions and service help raise awareness and understanding that in turn contribute to a more peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you. Our offering to the uh, mission and service and our offering to the church goes a long way. They perform so many things that is beyond our sometimes what we can comprehend. This morning, some of us are prepared to, we are bring, we are here with our envelopes, some are given by, during the week, some by e-transfer, some by par, but if you have not done so, or you want to give church a legacy giving that is something that the church will continue to remember you about, please 
just uh, talk to Mary at the, at the office and all this will be, will be organized. We appreciate your giving. We want to say thank you because if not for your support, your gift, your money, both in cash and in kind. Some people are here during the week doing one thing or the other. We appreciate all of you. It is all this that is keeping this church going. Some have been at the door this morning welcoming people doing the registration. So many things that we cannot uh, mention enough. We will appreciate you. We want to thank you and we want to seek more of, of all this. Please let us take our offertory prayers together this morning. Let us pray. Dear God, we bring our gift with thanksgiving, seeking your blessings. Word with your grace, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's continue the prayers. At this time, I want you to bring your personal petitions and prayers before God. Bring your personal prayers and petitions before God at this time. Let us bring our prayers to close as we continue in the prayers of intercession. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the second part of the year 2021. We thank you for the ways you have reached out to us in the embrace of prayer, in the energy of a song, in thoughts sparked by a sermon, and in wisdom of a word from scripture. Your healing has brought comfort in the midst of multiple challenges. Hear us, I will seek your comfort for the world, for the church, and for our lives amidst these challenges. May your wisdom and compassion guide us. Lord Jesus, bring comfort to, to those whose lives have been overturned by pandemic, to those who work or study has become so much more difficult, to those who cannot find work and don't work, I don't know where to turn, to those who still struggle with COVID-19 or another lingering illness, and those who have lost hope that things will ever improve. May your wisdom and compassion guide them. Lord Jesus, bring comfort to those who are lonely or shut in, and to all who have lost beloved family members or friends during the pandemic. Bring comfort to those who feel pain without relief, and those who wait for diagnosis or life restoring treatment. At this time, we remember some of our church members, those that are here or in their houses, those that are in the journey, in the hospital, those that have one challenges or the other. We remember all our neighbors that are to join us this morning. We pray for all our family, friends, and our community that are here to, to know the grace and saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that you draw them to you. We pray that you put the love of this church in all our neighbors in our communities. We, this morning we pray for Han Maria Rogers. We remember David Richard. We bring before you Dave and Donald Gallison. We remember Ken Nicholas. We bring before you Will and Maggie Patterson. We bring before you Tim Powell, Florence Ebion. This morning we remember Lori Young, Katarina Lenahan, Suzette McDonough. Trevor Nelson, Muriel McCallan. Also, we bring before you our minister and his family, Reverend Adekun Adeni and family. Offer peace 
and let your grace fall on everyone. Let your healing power rest upon us. Let us know peace. May we embrace your grace. Offer peace to those who know where there is no treatment and wait in hope for your eternal welcome. May your wisdom and compassion guide us. Lord Jesus, comfort your church in places where ministry struggle, whatever the reason, and challenge your church to renew our vision for ministry so that our witness is faithful to you all, embracing love, expressed not only in words but also in action. We take to embrace those who differ from us and yet have a place in your heart and your eternal care. Let us pray the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ together. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. <coughs> Not into temptation, but the word from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Our closing hymn is taken from Voices United, number 684. Make me a channel of peace. 684. Let us take the commissioning and benediction in a, yeah, let's take it. We are renewed 
filled with the sweetness of God. Go forth to bless the world with joy and the spirit of God's preventive love and sustaining peace. Um, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Tell somebody, Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you.